command those who are rich in this present age not to be arrogant, not to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. I've never understood the radical environmentalists. I've never understood them. I don't understand Greta. I have no doubt of her sincerity, but I don't understand her. Because everyone is talking about global warming. That's not our problem. It's moral cooling that's our problem. And Jesus said, because the love of many will grow cold, lawlessness will break out everywhere. Now, I want to tell you what I'm going to finish here. The gift of God is not just life. It's the power to enjoy it. The power to enjoy life. You know, my wife and I started in an apartment and she read that thing about she wanted to marry a man of God. That was before she figured it out. You marry a man of God, you're on a roller coaster ride. You're going to see an emotional swing. Why are you out of bed at three o'clock in the morning making noise in the next room? What is the matter with you? And let me tell you what we learned. We learned that our marriage was golden and romantic. I'd put it up against anything because of our ability to pray together. When a man and a woman in love pray together, there is nothing in the, there's nothing in Hollywood. It's better than the notebook. It's better than the romance novel. There is nothing like a man and a woman of God kneeling before the Lord. Somebody help me, I'm trying to preach. <laughs> Proverbs 10, 22 says this. The blessing of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow to it. The gift is not wealth. It's wealth without divorce. It's wealth without your kids being on drugs. It's wealth without a suicidal spirit, without an affair, without a drug, without arrogance and deception and poisoning. The gift of God is the ability to understand. That my life is not a cruel joke. I'm not an accident that crawled out of the primordial soup. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. The greatest mistake that you can make is to think that a set of beliefs and a few well-chosen religious terms means you're safe. Because you've got a, the worst problem of all. And I want you to look at me. This is the worst problem of all. I've got the features of Christianity and none of the joy. I've got the inference of God, but no power over my habits. This is why the Bible said, don't go by what someone says. Second Timothy 3 verse 5 says, having a form of godliness but denying his power. Meaning this, just like the billionaire can have everything and not enjoy it, you can have all the terms and not enjoy it. And right now, you're in here and you're, you carry a Bible and you go to church, but your loneliness and depression is overwhelming. And it's because at some point we made a religious mistake of thinking that it's better to allow you to stay in that depraved state than to lose your membership. But a man of God will look out at a crowd and love them enough to say, you know what? I don't care if you like me. I don't care if you tithe to me. What I care about 
is that if I have the power to get you out of the power of the devil, get you free of the emotional disaster that's going on in America, to make it so that your family will be a cohesive unit and you'll have joy and peace and power. That's what I want. Now, the last verse I'm going to read and then I'm going to give my appeal. The last verse I'm going to read begins at Acts chapter 8 verse 21. When a sorcerer said all the right words and came into the faith, but his heart was not right. And Peter looked at him because the man said, I love the way that people are baptized in the Holy Spirit when you lay hands on them. And he said, what would it cost me for you to transfer that gift? We are shocked at how many Christians in Colorado Springs are smoking marijuana and see no problem with it. And, and the terrified ministers who aren't ready to call them on it. Or the guy that bought your carpet that's sleeping with his secretary. And you won't call him on it. See, the thing I love with Peter is, you know what, dude? You said all the right things, but you're not right with God. You are not right with God. And he, and he went on and he said this, you have neither part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of your wickedness, of this your wickedness, and pray that God, if perhaps the thought of your heart might be forgiven you. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness. You know what happened at the end of COVID? They did a report today. Half a million people still didn't get the sense of smell and the sense of taste back. That's a good analogy. They have food they can't t smell. They have something they can't enjoy. You're sitting here right now. You know who you should be? You should be one of these young people jumping straight up and down because they realize I serve a living God. 